Hey guys, wife's working, kids are at school, dogs are fed, and I was just sitting on the couch a minute ago and I was having a beer and, and I was reflecting on how much the job site has changed in that last in the last decade or two, if you've been around that long. So I figured I'd turn on the camera and share some thoughts with y'all. So I've been working in the trades for 24 years. And when I first started out in the trades, I had like a lot of you guys, I had little money, very few tools. Shit, I framed my first house and I did everything with a circular saw, a reciprocating saw, and some hand tools and levels, of course. Um, a lot of guys probably started out like that. It wasn't until I got to the roof of this house and I was doing the roof sheathing that a friend of mine dropped off a huge gas, heavy gas compressor and a roof coil nailer for me to try. Man, I was sold just like that. Hand banging was over for me and I had found pneumatics. By the way, I still get tingling in my fingertips when I hand bang. So right around that same time, I started looking at what other tools were on the market. You know, tools that would make my job easier, more efficient, and maybe less stress on my body. So I splurged. I bought my first chop saw and table saw. Man, I think about that. I was like, I was all that. But wow, those tools were heavy right? They were steel, they were heavy. Now we look, we, let, we have lightweight cordless miter saws, table saws, impact drivers, cordless framing nailers, Tico nailers, lasers, and a slew of niche tools. Okay, so fast forward to the late 90s. On Father's Day, my wife bought me my very first T-handle 12-volt NICAD drill. And man, that thing was amazing. It stayed amazing until my brother, who was a plumber, bought me a 14 volt impact driver. An impact what, really? I had heard about them, read about them in trade magazines, but I'd certainly never tried one. And we didn't have Instagram and ways to share like we do today. So this tool was a game changer for me. The that impact driver actually heard me saying many, many times, I can't believe I used to do it the other way. So right around the turn of the century, God, that sounds old, right? Um, I was using some cordless NICAD tools. I think, I think back, it's hard to remember, but I think I had a cordless drill clearly. I had an impact driver now. I think I had a reciprocating saw, maybe a jigsaw, and a horrible flashlight, right? Because everybody had those horrible flashlights. Everything else was corded. Cordless tools were interesting to me, but they certainly weren't worth the hassle and they couldn't last long enough to get the job done. When you stop and think about it, I needed a hole drill, not a fancy cordless drill that had a dead NICAD battery, right? So, um, oh, so what came next? Well, the corded multi-tool came out. And again, I found myself saying, I can't believe I used to do this with a, a utility knife, a chisel, and a Japanese pole saw. It took forever to make some cuts that we used to make. Now we just buzzed them out. Then, in 2005, Milwaukee Tool invented the lithium-ion power tools. It was an achievement that marked a turning point for me as a contractor. I started thinking about it right around that time, 2005. I also started writing on uh, the Concrete Carpenter Toolbox Plus websites and I started thinking about things like what other battery powered tools can they come out with? Where is to, uh, cordless technology going and what does the next 10 years in cordless technology look like? Lithium ion changed that game. Well, we know what the last 10 years look like because we just lived through them, right? Cordless power tools transitioned from those NICAD, you know, paperweight battery packs to lithium ion. <clears throat> Hell, it didn't take long before I was nearly 100% cordless and the job site was way better performing with cordless tools. Even a cordless multi-tool, who would have thought that? So what could possibly be next? core trade um, tool platform build outs and better batteries for sure. Advancements in battery technology, yep, of course, right? Powerful cordless tools in the same size or smaller than their corded brethren, yep, I could see that. Not to mention better runtime, faster charging. We're already seeing and living that. But that's only part of the story. Then, then we started seeing tools, um, Gen 2s and, and things with brushless um, motors. That gave us more power, more tool efficiency, better performance, way over uh, performance than brush motors. And you can't forget about tool storage. Hell, I was using mill crates 
five gallon buckets and heavy, heavy toolboxes for tool storage. Man, that has totally changed now. I'm a tool storage efficiency fanatic now and I love it. Um, oh, how about those suck to operate hand tools that we all hated to use that are now cordless? You know the ones I'm talking about, things like um, a cordless stapler, cordless caulking gun, there's cordless grease guns and rivet guns now. And then there's, uh, Milwaukee has an amazing cordless copper tubing cutter that my brother swears would have saved himself from carpal tunnel if he had that when he was a younger plumber. And then the hacksaw, you gotta love that. And shoot, I almost forgot about lighting, right? Now everything's cordless with lighting. From flashlights to um, headlamps, Whoever would have thought in your wildest dreams that LED lighting was going to take over our job sites like it has? I didn't. So what about, what's on the horizon? Bigger batteries, faster tools, robots? No doubt manufacturers are going to continue uh, to think of new and innovative ways to improve and use our, for us to use tools. Um, I got to think that along the smart, smartphone you know, platform integration with cordless tools and smartphones, we'll continue to see advancements in battery technology, overall performance and new features, obviously, to help us work safely and more efficiently. So I always ask this question, how will this all affect the job site of the future? What's next for us? Well, I think if Milwaukee has anything to do with it, then it will be their MX fuel equipment system line. And I think it's gonna be the next game changer. And this is new information, guys. The MX fuel line is designed to replace gas equipment that we've been using for years on the job site. There's five MX fuel cordless tools coming out. Can you guess what they are? Did you even know about this? All right, so they have a, uh, a coring drill, handheld coring drill, 14 inch cutoff saw, a breaker, heavy breaker, a rocket tower light charger, and a carry on um, 1800 power watt supply. The coring, who? Arguably, coring is like the least exciting application for contractors, right? It's hard to do. Um, this new coring tool, it's gonna have less torque, less torque back on the user, I should say, better control in bind-up situations, plus you're not gonna trip the breaker anymore because uh, it's battery powered. The MX um, Fuel 14-inch cutoff saw, it's gonna have a five-inch depth of cut, less bright vibration, no gas, no fuel, uh, no fumes. The, uh, the breaker, it's gonna hit harder than most other breakers. It's gonna have a faster BPM and no air compressor or gas to run it. So, oh, the, few, the tower light. So the tower light charger. Say goodbye to those tower lights and those huge tower lights and balloon lights that we rely on generator power for. The new MX rocket's gonna be um, able to get into difficult access locations because it's way smaller. It's gonna deliver up to 27,000 lumens it stands 10 feet tall with these really cool outriggers that you can deploy in seconds, level it. It's awesome. And then there's the MX Fuel Carry-On Power Supply. So it's basically a battery powered generator. It's gonna supply 1800 watts of continuous quiet power with no noise, no gas, no fumes. If you wanna learn more about these really cool MX tools, head over to Toolbox Buzz because We've got an in-depth, detailed article with specs and, and features, and you want to learn about them. They're really cool. So guys, what's the cordless, what's the future of cordless look like for us? I'm thinking the MX line for sure. The ability to now eliminate fumes, noise, vibration, gas maintenance, and safety risks sounds pretty good. I'd love to hear what you think. What are the most notable changes that you've seen in power tools in your career as a, as a tradesman? And what do you think the next 10 years look like for us on the job site. I'm looking forward to reading your comments, guys. I read all your comments. I try to reply to every one of them. I'm Rob Robillard, and we'll see you next here at Toolbox Buzz. Have a great night.